Hi everyone, it's Adriana and today I'm going to show you my Christmas cake which is a Berry Chantilly inspired Yule Log. After a really heavy meal like a Christmas dinner, I always find it's really nice to serve something that's a little bit lighter and has lots of fruit. This Yule Log is inspired by my Berry Chantilly cake but we'll be using a chocolate sponge instead. It's filled with freshly whipped cream and any kind of berries that you like. And all those bad things you hear about sponge cake cracking when you try to roll it, well we're going to turn that into a positive thing because we are going to intentionally crack the outside of our cake to make it look like tree bark. We'll also go over how to make Tang Hulu which is a kind of candied fruit and actually Actually looks like you're serving it with iced berries. Alright, the first important thing we have to do is dust and flour our half sheet pan because that's going to make sure that our cake comes out in one piece. This is a Nordicware half sheet pan that measures about 12 by 17 inches on its interior surface. I saved my butter wrapper so I'm just rubbing butter all along the inside of the pan, then placing on a piece of parchment that I've cut to size. Make sure it's nice and flat on that bottom surface, then take a little bit of your flour, about a tablespoon, and then dust it along the sides of the pan. And I usually do this part over the sink so I don't get it everywhere, but I just wanted to show you all what it looks like when I dust the sides. Now let's make our chocolate roulade batter. To a large mixing bowl, add granulated sugar and six eggs. Then I just like to use my whisk attachment to gently just mix the egg yolks and sugar together. Then take a larger mixing bowl and pour an inch or two of just boiling water. Place your mixing bowl with the granulated sugar and egg yolks right on top and then use that whisk again to just gently whisk while we raise the temperature a bit. We're not cooking the eggs, but we're just raising the temperature of the eggs just slightly and melting the sugars a little bit so that when we whisk it up, it'll get lighter and and fluffier. You don't need a thermometer for this step, but if you want to, you want the eggs to be around 105 to 110 degrees. I'm just using one so that I can tell you what the eggs feel like when they do reach that temperature. It took me about two minutes to get to 110 degrees. As for how it felt like, there were a few granules of sugar that I could feel, and it just felt like warm tap water. So it doesn't have to be precise at all, so just kind of look for those clues if you don't want to use a thermometer. Now with the whisk attachment again, we're going to whip these eggs and sugar on high speed for about three to four minutes until it's very light and fluffy. And while that's going, let's go ahead and sift our dry ingredients. So I bake by weight and then I will convert into volume for those who need it, which by the way is going to be on my website if you need the full written recipe. And you will need cake flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, and salt. Give those a good sift into the bowl. So what we have going on are the eggs being beaten on the left and that's going to incorporate a lot of air into our cake and then that little bit of baking powder that we add to the dry mixture is going to expand that so it becomes a really light and fluffy cake. And after about three or four minutes, stop your mixer and you can do what's called a figure eight test. So you take your whisk and draw an eight with the batter and what it should do is kind of leave the eight and then melt in very slowly. And that's just indicating to us that there has been enough air that's been mixed into this batter. The next two steps we're going to do completely by hand so we don't knock out any of the air that we just incorporated into into the eggs. So go ahead and pour in all of your dry ingredients and then with a large spoon or spatula fold in all of the dry ingredients until it's homogenous in color. Because our dry ingredients contain cocoa powder we can kind of use that as an indicator to tell us whether or not we've mixed everything together thoroughly. So just cut through the batter using your spoon or spatula, pick it up and place it over the top really gently and once your batter turns kind of a light cocoa color you're done. All right and our last step is to add the oil. So I just just added some oil to the same bowl that I mixed the dry ingredients in, then took a couple spoonfuls of that batter and placed it in the oil. Now mix that oil in a small amount of batter really well. Don't worry about knocking out the air in this amount of batter because what we're doing is diluting the fat or the oil so that when we put it back into the main bowl, it's not too heavy and gets incorporated more easily without knocking out so much air. And just pour all of that oily batter back into the main bowl and again just start folding that in until every Everything gets all mixed together and the batter actually turns a little bit shiny. This doesn't take as long as mixing the dry ingredients into the egg sugar mixture that we just did, but I would say half as much folding. Then grab your prepared pan and just pour all of the batter in. You can use a spatula or a cake scraper and we're just pushing the batter to all four corners.
corners and all the edges of the pan. Give the pan a good shake to level off the surface and then two really firm taps on your countertop. Those are going to remove those really big unsightly air bubbles so you have a really consistent crumb for your sponge cake. Then place your pan in the middle of an oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 to 22 minutes. You'll know your cake is done by using one of these three methods. You can do the skewer test and because this is such a thin cake we're going to go in at a diagonal and you should have very little to no crumbs attached. The second method uses an instant read thermometer and your thermometer should register between 205 and 209 degrees Fahrenheit. And the third method is something I suggest all bakers do because it's good to know what a baked cake feels like. So you just touch the cake and it should spring back very lightly on all parts of the cake. Let it cool completely in the pan before removing it. Next, let's make our Tang Hulu decorations. Tang Hulu describes any kind of fruit that's covered in a hard sugar syrup, and it actually looks like ice, so it's really great for these Yule logs. To a small saucepan, bring water and sugar to a boil. We'll need a candy thermometer for this project because what we're looking for is the hard crack stage, so between 300 to 310 degrees Fahrenheit. It takes about 10 minutes to reach that temperature, so let's prepare our fruit in the meantime. So I have some washed strawberries and raspberries that have been dried off, and we're just going to insert skewers into the larger fruit, so the strawberries, and then we'll, we'll, we'll use another technique for the raspberries. So pull the leaves back on the strawberries so they don't get dunked in the sugar syrup as well, and then just place a skewer down the middle. I also have a styrofoam block right there so that I can dry the strawberries upright, but you can also use a nonstick baking mat like I have there, or parchment paper. Once your sugar syrup is ready, for the bigger fruit, I had to tilt my saucepan to the side to ensure that everything got covered, then let the excess syrup drip off. Then I just have some extra sanding sugar because I think it looks a little bit like snow on ice. Then sprinkle that all around and then prop the strawberry up onto the styrofoam block to dry. And for the raspberries, you can't really skewer down the middle, so I kind of just placed it on the end of the skewer and then just gently dipped a side of it into the sugar syrup, let the excess drip off, and then I just placed that directly onto my my sill pad and then sprinkled a little bit of sugar on top. The sugar syrup should harden in less than a minute, so we'll set those aside while we roll up our Yule log. Next, let's make our stabilized whipped cream. And for the stabilizer, I'm using gelatin. You can skip this step if you don't eat gelatin or you're consuming the cake within the next 24 hours, but this does help the whipped cream maintain its shape and not leak any fluid if you plan on making this cake ahead of time, let's say, for the next day. So to a small bowl, add one tablespoon of cold water and sprinkle on a half teaspoon of gelatin on top. Set that aside to bloom while we whisk up our heavy whipping cream. Here I have a mixing bowl that I've placed in the freezer for about five to 10 minutes minutes, making sure that the whipped cream whips up in a cold environment kind of makes it a little bit stronger to hold on to those air bubbles. And so go ahead and add your heavy cream and granulated sugar and whip on medium speed. So first I'm just going to mix this on medium speed for about 20 seconds and then I'm going to take the gelatin that should now be nice and kind of firm inside that small bowl and place it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. The gelatin water should now be in a liquid state but it should not be hot. We want it to be body temperature or less when we add it into the whipped cream because we don't want to alter the temperature of the whipped cream as we're trying to build it up. And then after about 30 seconds on medium high speed, whipped cream should look a little bit like this. At this point, this is when I like to add in the gelatin so go ahead and pour that in and then whip on high speed for about another 15 to 20 seconds. At this point feel free to add any kind of flavorings like vanilla or almond. I'm not going to add any to mine but when you stop the mixer a little bit should be balled up inside the whisk and it should be very light and fluffy but still smooth. All right let's get ready to assemble our yule log and the first thing we have to do is remove the cake from the pan and we will need parchment paper for this step. Just make sure that you have a long enough piece so that it extends on the short ends by a couple inches. Then slide a butter knife along every edge of the pan and then I like to lift all four corners to ensure that I've gotten all of the edges cut loose. Don't worry about being super straight about this because we're going to trim the edges of this cake anyways. Place your parchment paper on top of the cake and then a large cutting board or another cookie sheet and flip the entire thing over. Lift the pan off then peel off your parchment paper backing. Now we're going to trim all four sides of the cake. We don't want those hard crusty sides because they're not as soft as the interior of the cake and they also make it more difficult to roll up. Now for the fourth side, I'm going to trim off a little bit more than just the edge. So I would say about two and a half to three inches, about the length of your pointer finger. I'm just using a ruler so I can show you guys about how long you should cut. It doesn't have to be precise at all, but I find that when I use this whole length of cake, it just turns into this huge roll, which you can totally do if you want. I'm just going to 
match your mind because I like my roll a little bit smaller. Now the key to getting your roll to sit flat on a plate or platter is that you have to trim the short side off at an angle. So you're trimming off a triangle. So go in at a 45 degree angle and cut off a very small edge of cake. Now it's time to fill the roll. So take all of that whipped cream that you just made and place it on your cake. Then use an offset spatula to smooth it all out. So we want a pretty consistent layer throughout this entire surface. We just want to leave a little bit of a gap on the longer edges so that when we roll everything up, it doesn't squeeze out the ends. Additionally, we don't want to put too much cream on the edge where we cut off at an angle because that's the bottom of the roll. So that's where the roll is going to be sitting. And if we put a lot of cream there, it's also going to squeeze out the end. And since this is a berry chantilly cake inspired Yule log, we have to add some berries to the inside. So I just have some fresh raspberries and strawberries that I've cut up. You don't want the strawberry pieces to be too big because then it's going to interfere with the rolling as well. So I just cut them into slices and then cut the slices in half. And again, it's good to avoid about the lower three inches of the Swiss roll with any kind of fruit because when we roll everything up, we want it to be straight and not kind of stick or roll to the side. And if you add fruit there, it might do that. All right, time to roll this Yule log up. So just position the cake so that the tapered side is away from you. So now you know why we needed parchment paper that was a little bit longer than the entire length of the cake. So we're gonna turn this into a roll by using just the parchment paper, which is gonna do all of the heavy lifting for us. So pull the cake up and then kind of press very gently so that the cake folds onto itself. And this is the, really the only part where you have to touch the cake. You just have to make sure that this end kind of curls inward and pull the paper up. And as you're doing this, try to pull the cake towards you. I have it on a cutting board, but I just make sure that it's like closer to you so that you can manipulate it a little bit easier and then you're just going to pull the paper up and the cake is just going to roll over itself and when you get to the very end of the roll meaning the cake is sitting on that tapered end take the overlapping parchment paper and tuck it underneath the cake so i'm using a plastic cake scraper i've seen other people use a dowel rod but you want to use something that's going to push the paper underneath the cake while at the same time pulling the opposite end so this is tightening the roll so that you get a really nice swirl inside then to kind of lock it in place all you have to do is continue rolling the paper i then like to seal the ends in but before i do that i check to make sure the cake is right side up so the tapered end is actually on the bottom and then fold the sides in then you're going to want to place this in the fridge for about an hour and this is a totally optional step but if you want a really cylindrical log place it in something that has a cylindrical shape like this oatmeal can here or a large pitcher and what that does is ensure that it maintains that circular shape along the bottom instead of flattening although if you do have a flattened yule log that's totally fine i've seen a lot of beautiful yule logs that have that shape all right so mine's been chilling in the fridge for about an hour and i'm going to unwrap it plate it and decorate it with our fruit to give this yule log a really clean look i'm going to trim off the edges and save it as a little snack for myself then transfer your cake to a platter and to simulate the look of bark on a tree we're going to do something a little crazy that we usually don't do with cake we're going to press very lightly over the surface of the cake and create a bunch of tears and that actually makes it look like a log and then decorate around your cake with whatever fruit you like so i always like to try and source things from my garden and i have a tiny little kumquat tree that's growing so that's where i got these leaves and my little kumquat fruits and i'm also going to use the tang hulu that i made earlier here is the finished cake i'm just going to do one more thing to top it off and that's dust on some powdered sugar which i'm pretty sure is a requirement for all christmas cakes 